Hi, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, Nikolai here with Finance Feeds. I'm here with Mohammed from uh, Equity Capital. Uh, Mohammed, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thanks nice for having us. Nikolai. Thanks Thank for having for us. Opportunity. Um, first off, just wanted to get your impressions of this event, and uh, you know, it's the first time that we're able to meet together, and uh, you know, in two years, uh, kind of, what is your expectations for the next yeah. two days? I mean, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, we've been in, in lockdowns. We haven't met anyone in the industry for that for about two years so we're definitely excited you know every every time you go to one of these expos people would say oh it's always the same faces but you know what I say this time it's really good to see these old these old faces yep. again and I'm really excited we've seen a lot of traffic and I think it's a just for from the first couple of hours it has been a great success and I, I would like this to continue you know to happen in Dubai as well I think it's a it's a nice hub for the region and, and I think it's a, it's a great start cool so let's talk a little more about equity um, I think a lot of your growth has been sort of propelled by the demand for uh, a set of very uh, sort of comprehensive um, financial uh, sort of investments, right? Uh, how has that um, sort of growth, um, how, how important has the sort of uh, local touch been in terms of that, that growth that you have sort of yeah. achieved specifically within the regions that you, know, yeah. you work with? So uh, for me, equity, when, when from the start we were always have that vision in mind we are a global company with a local with a local presence it's deep cut in our, into our values and we, we truly believe in the, the value of localization that's why we have around seven licenses around the world now we have over 11 12 offices around the world as well because we believe in the value of the local understanding the culture understanding the payment procedures understanding you know the business and how it works the ins and outs of it so that doesn't really because for me it's also now the time with digitalization and everything needs to be done online and you can yes. do a lot of things remotely so you need that 100% to survive in this, in this industry but for you to do a perfect job you need both you need the local touch and you need the international touch using your you know your, your new digitizations your online portals and all of that but at the end of the day I, I, I really feel the value of the local presence and the face-to-face -face conversations is still is of the essence especially in the investment sphere sure um, and uh, actually to follow up on that in terms of the regulations um, one of the things that um, you know we've noticed is that equity has quite a few licenses in in, in many d different jurisdictions some of which are um, we could say maybe not as popular uh, with other companies and I guess um, the question is uh, through that experience kind of in those localities how has it helped you grow perhaps um, uh, I know that you guys do some business business in Africa, for example, which is, again, not a region that, you know, all brokers are attracted sure. to, let's say. Yeah, I mean, like you said, we, we do have a, a wide range of, of licenses and, you know, we, we started with the, with the usual suspects, the FCA and then all of that. But then we started to kind of go into, because we wanted to target, uh, you know, markets that are still emerging, that uh, the competition is not fierce and the, the markets that really need some help in terms of like developing the infrastructure of the, of the, the FX the FX business and the technological infrastructure. So we started by going, so whenever the uh, Jordan to start with uh -huh. has started to issue the licenses, we were the first one to go there and, 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 uh, and do it. Yes. And honestly, that was one of our major successes in the company because not only Jordan has business going out going since the 80s, since 86 there was FX business. And then there was a ban for about 12, 15 years, but the traders uh -huh. and, uh, and the talent that, is, that was there in Jordan, we immediately were able to kind of pick up where we we were left off and immediately expanded and not only for Jordan but the whole Levant region uh -huh. after that you know after the success of Jordan also we had some uh, the communication with the CMA in, in Kenya and um, they weren't issuing license at the time and we kind of you know we start we had them draft the, the agreements and then the legal the, the legalities of it mm -hmm. and we we were the first one to kind of acquire the license as well there mm -hmm. now we, we were not able still to scale up in Africa but being the first mover in Kenya yep. helped us really well also to be the first on the ground, build that society, and now you know I think also it's a great success in terms of massive number of accounts. Mm -hmm. um, when you, when you're local, it's not only also about the personal touch and the face-to-face -face conversation. It's also the payment solutions that you get, the bank accounts, and all of that. Uh -huh. And you're operating, you're advertising on the streets, on the newspapers. So it it really changes a lot. So we like this, and this is our vision. We, 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 in, in, my, in my opinion, that we would be happy to have within the next five to ten 
years, more than 20, 25 licenses. Wow, that. really? That's that's what I like. That, to that's, that would be a pretty amazing goal to achieve, I, I think, yes. yes. Well, uh, um, you mentioned uh, banks and payments. Um, uh, an interesting question is, um, from the B2B side of your business, um, are, are you able to provide brokers with uh, sort of these very targeted sort of local and regional solutions for yeah. the uh, acquiring or, 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 or um, banking or custody? Yeah. So uh, on the B2B side, the story is, is, is a bit different. So in the B2B side, we mainly, all of that business that definitely goes into under, the, under our FCA company, which is Equity Capital. And until now, the regulatory environment hasn't been allowing us to deal much on the B2B side I with see. the with the PSBs. Mm -hmm. Now, across our different entities, we have started also onboarding a few clients here and there on the B2B side. And we're looking at the major demand now is mainly on cryptocurrency deposits. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are solutions around that some of them pose certain risks on ourselves and on the clients. So we're trying to find the best possible solution to be able to do this and help our uh, broker clients while still within our regulatory framework. Mm -hmm. Currently, what I would say, most of the retail brokers, they would handle these PSPs and they, it's kind of their responsibility to have the money back into their bank accounts and transfer yes. uh, bank to bank to, mm -hmm. to us at the moment. Uh -huh. Well, that's very interesting because um, we, like, like we actually uh, spoke before, um, we know that crypto payments are a very big deal at the moment. Yeah. And I think uh, uh, ultimately what traders are looking for, the end, the end customers looking for the swiftness and in terms of the processing and, and, and uh, efficiencies and things like that. And I'm sure that that is something that um, yeah. you guys are uh, actually able to provide because Absolutely. you have experience in it. Absolutely. I mean, on the retail side, I think we've already started doing that, but on the B2B side, Side, you know, you have that urgency when someone needs yes. to deposit and margin. Now, with the B2B sites, we rely more into on credit lines at the moment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with the history that we have with the client, with their balance sheets and all of that, we are always, you know, able to offer some sort of uh, an emergency credit facility, a pre-approved that they know about and yes. we know about, uh, with a swift transfer as well to kind of make sure that their accounts are well maintained. Mm -hmm. So, I, I see that as a temporary solution. I don't really like it, but I think this is the only option that we have currently. But but I'm hoping, like, because like you said, with crypto transfers, with these PSPs, it's instant. Within five minutes, you'll be able to fund your account. So um, I'm, I'm hoping within the next couple months, we'll be able to do something on that space. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit. I heard something about you are launching some kind of services or products that involve machine learning and yes. like artificial intelligence. Yes. Uh, what's yeah. that all about? So, so since the the creation of Equity Group, we have heavily invested in IA and, 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 and in AI and machine learning, and we have a, an, a, a company under our group. It's called Equity Labs that has an incubator within the Royal Holloway College of London. Ooh, okay. uh, so we work with uh, math professors and, and students there to kind of you know build our AI and, and machine learning activities so there's a lot of a lot of investment has been done a lot of time has been spent but uh, and, and until now we most of the work that have done was mainly for internal use to our risk management tools our pricing engines our pricing I aggregation uh -huh. so we haven't been able to pass any of that to the clients yet but I'm I'm a big believer that this is the future of our industry and we're working on a couple of really cool things now to be rolled out to clients and for them to actually to see the work that has been done behind the curtains and, and be able to improve the experiences as well. I see. And you mentioned um, a school in London, so I guess in a sense you are also helping sort Absolutely. of students or, or uh, I guess college graduates maybe yes. to be sort of a, pro a part of your sort of development process exactly. in this field. Yeah? Exactly. And it, it's, it's amazing. I mean, uh, we, we don't spend a lot of time there, me personally, but uh, the, the, the couple of times that I went there, it was, it was amazing because you see people within your company that are doing massive things, things I don't really understand, right, you know, right, it's just, yes. you know, all I feel numbers the same and way. Yes. The equations and all of that. Yes. And then you see a lot of students are actually signing up for the, for the internships and, and all of that. But the outcome of those, so the business side will always kind of ask these questions. What is yeah. the outcome of this? Yeah. How this can improve my clients? And these conversations that I have are amazing because these guys are professors and just, their job is to translate the requirements that we give them into an actual right. product. Mm -hmm. And it really amazes me. And uh, I'm very happy. The, the few times that I went there, I was really, really happy to see this dynamic. Right, 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 right. It, it almost feels like we're getting older, right? In a sense, <laughs> agree, right? Yeah. In a sense. Unfortunately, yeah. Well, um, also, I mean, if we look at the sort of the, the, the broader B2B industry right now, right? You have retail brokers and everything like that. 
I mean, as you know, there's constantly there's constantly changing dynamics with brokers and what their demands are, right? Like we can say, like let's say a comprehensive suite of you know credit lines, liquidity, um, uh, execution, uh, you know prime brokerage uh, relationships, and all of that. Tell me how equity has sort of stayed ahead of the curve when it comes to everyone else because let's be honest there are other companies in the space yeah, yeah. I mean to be honest it was it was a tough time especially in the b2b space because you know usually um, retail brokers would only send a little bit of volume a little bit of, uh, you know they'd like to uh, to internalize a lot of the flow but during that volatility times everyone was reaching their limit so even for us as a liquidity provider we have seen a lot of increase even from the same brokers that we've been dealing with for years with the volatility we've, we've seen a lot of incoming flow and even for us we have a lot of internal limits and all of that but what we had and what we pride ourselves to have as well is that we had a, a continuous communication all the time about all the developments that were happening with us we've always been in communication with our clients and uh, telling them the the, 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 the the changes that's happening and the volatility and what what we are expecting yep. also we use a lot of that also to adjust our risk models according to the changes that's been happening I see we, I mean our risk management team and our trading team has done a phenomenal job in terms of like following up with the geopolitical calendars even the health calendars at the time news from the vaccine and and was able to always try and adjust our risk book models and and make sure that we are up to date also we, we try to stay ahead of the curve in terms of the margin uh, changes that happen because the volatility we always base our margins based on volatility and, and value at risk limits and and with with time there's a lot of changes you know oil went below zero gold is spiked, and then you know the stocks and all of that so we were trying to always you know stay up up to date with all the news and all of that and be able to anticipate the margin the margin changes before the big volatility comes in and you know you find yourself in a position like the SMB event or, yes yeah. so this is what we're trying to do and and, 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 and we're really happy that we've did, done a great job while everyone was working from home which was just a major challenge indeed well indeed us. indeed it has been a very very sort of very challenging two years I can't believe it's been two years it's, it's right unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, so uh, uh, touching more uh, specifically on the B2B side um, in terms of liquidity and pricing um, you offer sort of uh, bespoke liquidity I think solutions through I think one zero and PXM yeah. and I think those liquidity solutions could be either manual or back-to-back -back. Um, can we talk about sort of the importance of uh of uh, uh, execute execution and liquidity for for brokers and kind of how sort of how you guys treat um, sort of that specific aspect of the B2B business yeah. because at the end of the day the pricing is arguably one of the most important things. Of course, of course. So for, for me we, we use Prime XM and One Zero as our main uh, technology aggregating but we also connect it to pretty much everything uh, all the technology providers in the market because we believe that we should be able to distribute our liquidity to the to the client to their uh, choice of technology so you got you know the tools for brokers the gold eyes and a lot yes, of other providers in companies. the market mm -hmm. when it comes to choosing our own aggregation technology we would like to work with what we think is the best the in, best solution in, in the industry so that's what we use but for distribution we think flexibility is what's needed flexibility in terms of the technology now that might cost us by the way a few extra dollars per million uh -huh. because we're gonna have to feed in from prime XM or from one zero to a third party as well I see. Mm -hmm. but at least it will save some money for the client and I think clients deserve to have the flexibility to choose their own technology as well and um, we, we, we strive to work on that from the technology side while on the aggregation side we constantly in review of our LP so we face BNP as a, our main prime, okay. uh, prime prime broker and then we have about 25 different LPs on the back of that so we have a weekly daily monthly reports you know I evaluating see. LPs fill rates right. uh, latency and all of that and we continuously trying to improve our experience so flexibility on the technology creating bespoke liquidity pools for our retail brokers uh -huh. I think this is the key to success in this business great um, well uh, le sort of go going away a little bit um, from the B2B and sort of off topic because this is something that everyone has been discussing lately um, social trading right um, we had the events with the GameStop stock and many other stocks and then those traders look like they rushed to gold afterwards as well and the kind of prop that prop the prices up there as well I ask all of uh, all of my um, colleagues what's your impression of all of 
this? Yeah. Is it going to continue? And what do you think is going to be the long-term impact, you know, first for retail brokers, but then also on the B2B side? Because again, companies like yourselves have to sort of help the brokers face yeah. Yeah, yeah. face these sort of onslaught of those of those social traders. It's, it's definitely was one of the most challenging stories of our of the industry in the last two years, you know, despite yeah. of all the things that happened. And I think it definitely changed the dynamics because you're always believed in the big funds and the big institutions. They are the market movers. But now, if you look about it, you know, social trading, one tweet from this guy, one tweet from this guy, they'll gang up and they'll do whatever they want. Yes. I think the element of surprise was really important in this. Okay. I highly doubt it would be, it would happen again, especially in the FX and metal space. Now, I would say maybe equities is still more prone to it. Um, I mean, the liquidity on both sides are not, not equal. But I think for brokers, what this means is that you need to up, you know, up game your, your, um, your risk, <laughs> right. risk, risk level. I mean, our, our risk team, I mean, th th we, we didn't have, we, we, for us, we, we offer only like a, a specific suit of equities. So we try to target the main, like the, 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 the ones in demand, the Amazons, the Netflix. So we didn't go into a lot of uh, changes. But I think that's, that's a trend now. You have to go into as many products as you can. Right. But with every product that you have and you add, you need to have your risk management procedures and you have to have you know, enough funding behind the company. You have to follow these trends. You have to be on these trends to understand really what's going on in the market. Because you know what, for me, I think the dynamics have changed. Maybe this was an off event, one off event, at least for this short time. Yep. But the future is yep. going there for sure. In the next three to four years, I think this will be the, the like, the more general it, trend. Like more of like a standard more sort like of standard. that everybody yeah, yeah. will have to a, a, exactly. accommodate, accommodate and be, used to, and be yeah. used to. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Well, listen, Mohammed, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, it's a pleasure to, to pleasure see to you. Meet you and thank you and, for the and time. And the fact that we can sit here and, and talk together is, 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 is great. I wish you the best of luck in, uh, in during the thank conference well. and uh, I hope to see you soon. Cheers. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. I appreciate it.